Yeah, that is. And, and you really hit the nail on the head. It's the conquer and divide. And the adversary, uh, the, his, his greatest weapon is to separate the family. First, you put the, the husband out in the workforce, and then you put the, the wife out in the workforce, and then you put the children involved 24-7 and, and overexposed to sports and, and all these things. When you separate that family, then they're not strong. I mean, I can tell you so many guys, I used to have a job that was, uh, I traveled on the road as a, as a traveling superintendent. And I, you would find yourself in situations in hotels and bars away from your wife, in, in rooms that you're exposing yourself to temptations that you would never, ever have if your wife had been there with you. Yeah, exactly. And one thing that we are always been really care- careful to do is that we, we often we get asked to go to different places for speaking engagements and things. And a lot of times they don't want to bring the family along because they don't want to spend the airfare and the hotel and all that. And we, we just have a policy. We travel together. We travel as a family or we don't go at all. I love that because it really is. It's almost like when you work with animals, you understand this, that it's about separating from the herd, separating from the family. Isolating that animal is what predators do. And we can be that animal. You know, as I'm like feeding goats with this feed bag it's almost like they're watching a tv like I'm, I'm, and i'm just behind him like a little grabber like oh you know taking their milk <laughs> and it's like they try to do that with the road they try to do that with jobs they, they they're isolating the man putting them just connected in a little hotel room with an internet alone the, the mother's home alone with the kids alone and and i completely concur that in the future for me i used to tour all the time and now i almost never do it will be like with family or I won't because um, yeah, I, I feel unsettled now when I'm away from them and I'm not there to protect and to help and to move stuff and all that. And uh, that's how they're trying to do it. And, and the beauty of, of truth is if someone watches one of your videos, one of my videos, one of Vox's videos, and, and they see that there's another path, all that stuff starts to melt so quickly which is why they have to have such a monopoly on media and all this stuff, because the, the amount of effort it takes, the amount of Kardashians and public schools and all this stuff that it takes to cement this fake existence can be just destroyed with just one 20 second clip of a happy family existing the way they should exist. And it makes people like yearn for that, especially women. Like women don't want to be these Petri dishes in cubicles. It's not for them. And so when they see like an Amy, they're like, oh, I'd rather have that life. I'd rather be home with my babies. Like, what is this? You know, and then that's why they are so against people like us to uh, expose them to community living, self-sustaining, sustainable living, you know? No, that's it. That's so true. You know, and I, I noticed that growing up, just watching television and how men and families were portrayed and the men were always stupid and bumbling and they always lived in fear of the of, of their woman i mean a lot of people will, will refer back to the cosby's and they'll say well the cosby's wasn't that such a wholesome and wonderful show <laughs> it was actually just the opposite of that you had an overpowering dominant woman uh, that ruled the roost that her husband skulked and, and hid things and sneaked around in fear of her you had disrespect of uh, children that was that was not the ideal family that's all programming and one of the one of the big reasons why we started the channel and, and the main focus behind it is just to show people, just to be an antidote to that. Yeah. Look, here is a God-fearing Christian family that is not crazy, uh, that is not um, uh, 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 teaching uh, poor, poor morals, uh, showing values, and, and people understand the truth. The truth has a certain ring about it, and people, if their ears are open and their eyes are open, they immediately know it when they see it and when they hear it. Yeah, and if you look at the Cosby, it's funny you bring up the Cosby show. If there wasn't the laugh track, I've done whole episodes on the the Tavistockian laugh track, how, you know, Seinfeld, they're showing you four metropolitan psychopaths destroying people's lives. But since there's a laugh track, ha, 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 people then start accepting it. If you saw a Mr. Cosby in person, I, and he's wearing these absurd sweaters, making these faces like, like, I wouldn't trust my kids at that house. If there was a father wearing just nonsense sweaters all the time, he's like, oh, it's Rudy. And the, 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 like, the, the stutter, the eye rolling, the facial expressions, the fear, the sulking, the secrecy, I'd be like, get out of there. That guy's a pervert. And, like, he clearly acts like a pervert. You know, he's wearing, 
because that's what the pervs do. They they wear these absurd clothing items, and then they 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 make crazy faces and stutter and sneak and lie. And I'm like, with, without the laugh track, that you know, they eat the pudding, the pudding and pups. They eat the pudding and the pudding. If I if if that old if that sob ever told my son to eat the pudding pop, I would probably put him in a shallow grave. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And and that making light of the husband and the father and the head of the household is, is what it comes down to is it's mocking God. Yeah. God is we are made in the image of God and we are to be the example to our household. Like when our kids are little, you know, they can't understand the concept of Christ and, and of God. And so we stand in that place as that image until we can they're at a mature enough age where we can point them to the light. We're not the light, but, but in the, we have to be a stand in that time. And when you're a bumbling fool and, and you're an idiot and you wear ridiculous clothing, what does that say about God? What does that say? What is that programming them? Uh, it's gonna pro- what it's going to do is it's going to make them have a difficulty, difficulty when they're older in, into uh, accepting Christ. Oh, yeah. And it's also you can see so many of these materialist atheist types – talking about how God is absurd and God is, is a fairy tale and God let them, and it, they might as well be talking about their dads where you're like, Oh, your father represented God horribly in your house. And now you have a hatred for God. You know, if you look at the four horsemen of the atheist apocalypse, like uh, all those guys, like Sam Harris and, and all these guys, they all had either absent dads or gamma dads. Like none of them had strong dads because the father Uh, You know, Jessica Lee Peterson talked, was the first person to introduce me to that idea. And it just hit me so clearly where, you know, the father is the representative of God in the home. And so that it goes, you know, God, father, woman, child in order of protection. And if you fail, your child has a horrible image of his creator. And, you know, I think a, a lot of the male job is the father and husband is to protect the wife and mother so she can do a great job with the babies and toddlers and then as they get older the father helps the boy become the man but the main thing is just protection and uh bringing supplies and stuff like that and so when you have this bumbling idiot uh you know the even dad can do it you know nick DePaulo used to have this great joke about like this computer's so easy even dad can do it and he's like oh the one who bought you the computer you know it's like have some respect (laughs) 